start it. So uh, we only have presumably three weeks left. Um, those last few are pretty loaded, but they're it's like loaded with things that are kind of weird and esoteric and we might not care about in a lot of cases. And so I figure we can probably blow through some of it pretty fast. So I plan to keep this schedule unless as we actually do it, we don't make it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We have been running pretty long lately. Um, and judging by the the group right now, I think it's very likely that we're going to want to basically alternate these to finish up the the docs because um, Tan is iffy. Uh, Priyanka's, you know, it's late at night for her. Gus might make it. So maybe I'll try to get Gus to do one of these. Um, but anyway, uh, beyond that, um, the other like bookkeeping ish things I have is, um, you know, I mentioned it on Slack S7 officially hit Cran yesterday. Um, for those of us who are nerdy enough to read Arlang, oh, there's Gus, uh, to read the Arlang docs S7, you know, we, we're kind of in S7's target audience. Um, I'm probably going to talk about it a teeny tiny bit today. Um, oh, sorry, guys. No problem. I was just saying that we only have this handful left. I'm going to, I would like us to try to actually hit all of these things. And if you can take one of, you know, one of them, that'd be awesome. Um, otherwise, I was thinking that Arthur and I would probably alternate. Um, and then the other thing is just because of this club, um, and reading the design principles book as Hadley is writing it, um, I was looking at our vest issues and there was this use our line check exclusive. And I was like, oh, hey, I know what that means. I know how to use that. And so uh, I submitted this PR today um, where he had, uh, it's mostly here, he had um, this if then kind of or if else situation going on that I cleaned up a bit with the um our line check exclusive so that was fun um all right then so be, without further ado i will get to the stuff we're here for today so um i'm looking at two sections of the code um or of the the docs today actually i had that open and then i got rid of it um it is in down in objects there are um, is it vectors, this section here, and type predicates. And um, both of these sections hit pretty strongly on the vectors package and some holes that I think that are in the vectors package. So I wrote a package that actually has to do with kind of this combined with the function argument stuff. So I'm going to be talking kind of in that general area and try to finish, I'm gonna to try to finish by noon. So, all right. Um, the first section in here is this whole create vectors um, series of functions. You can see lifecycle questioning. So these are basically um, like C that checks that the arguments make sense and does some light uh, coercion or um, they, they differentiate between coercion and casting and vectors, but here, they're calling it coercion. So it, it's okay, we, we want integers, true, false, 20. And so it coerces true and false to integers. We want double and it allows splicing. So you can do this splice list one, two and true. And so, you know, it makes doubles out of all of those. Um, but they have the note here that um, probably these are gonna move to vectors. Um, I'm intrigued to see what happens there because as we're going to see vectors is kind of the tidyverse or or whatever the arlang s3 package like it's the how to deal with s3 and hadley is leading the s7 push so um i'm curious like vectors has some stuff in it for uh multiple dispatch meaning the first two arguments are what it uses to decide what to call in some cases instead of just the first argument. Um, and they had to hack it together in vectors versus S7. That's one of the features of S7 is it allows for multiple dispatch. So 
Um, I'm intrigued to see if they sub out everything that they've done in vectors into S7. Um, anyway, so that's these functions are are just you know you can make uh, vectors or you can do vector coercion. Um, probably like I don't think I would use these because of that questioning tag. I think they're likely to move. If they move, it'll probably be relatively painless to switch, you know, just R lang colon colon to vectors colon colon. But um, anyway, I, I would I would just use vectors if I wanted to do the stuff they want to do here. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about vectors in a minute. Uh, the next thing we've talked about these in the course of some of the tidy evaluation stuff that there's list two, which is basically just list. Um, but it allows you to do splicing and some other things. It does, uh, it allows you to specific, well, the dots list allows you to specifically set kind of rules of what you're expecting in the dots. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's nice. Like it has a, what to do if there's an empty element uh, in the list. So um, you can ignore, just if there's a comma at the end, you ignore it, which is uh, something they do a lot. You know, that's the default here that they do a lot in the tidyverse. Um, you can ignore uh, no extra like commas. It, it, so you can say, no, you can't have any weird arguments or you can say, yeah, you can put blank arguments anywhere in there. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I think there are cases where that was, that would probably be really useful if you have like weird possible inputs coming in. Um, but it's also dangerous. I, I understand the trailing one because, you know, leaving that last comma, sometimes that's nice, especially during debugging. Um, but the other like interior commas probably mean there's an error unless you are specifically dealing with it. So. Um, that's that preserve empty. Um, so it's, do you want to actually keep them as missing or do you want to just drop them if they're ignored? Um, so homonyms, if you have two things that, um, have the same name, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep them all? Do you want to only keep the first one? Do you only want to keep the last one or do you want to error? Um, again, this is something that can be really useful. There are cases where you want, uh, like, uh, CLI, um, all the uh, bullet functions, you know, you have multiple things with the same name, but then there are other cases where uh, you want that to be an error or you might want to just silently take the first one um, or take the last one. Um, and, oh yeah, that's the other one is you'll see in some tidyverse things, if you put in an assignment operator instead of equals, it'll, or not necessarily instead of, but um, just if you do this in the middle of arguments, um, they'll throw errors in some cases, and that's what's going on there. Is that's that check assign? Um, so, all right. Any questions, thoughts, comments on that? All right. The next two, real quick, that I'm going to go into is they have these um, uh, like sequence functions so they have rep along and rep named and actually here let me do this because um rep along is like or it's based on seek along um so there's seek along in base r and seek in base r seek is basically like a colon if you're working with integers so seek uh seek from one to ten returns all the integers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um seek uh three to one returns three, two, one. In seek two, if you have three, two, one, it um, returns an empty vector. So um, that is because sometimes you can say, I want to do this thing from this to that. And if it's if the arguments are backwards in base R, it's like, okay, fine. And it just does it backwards. And you might get results that you don't expect. Um, I didn't do the search to see if they use this like presumably they had some problem that this was going to solve is why this ex exists. Um, but it's good to know it exists in case you need it. And then seek to along is um, like uh, like seek along, except you can say, or you say from. So instead of uh, seek along this vector, um, you know, like seek along gives you a vector that's the same length. 
So one to 10, if there are 10 elements or whatever, this does X or, you know, from to the length. Um, I have definitely had things where I want to like take the second thing in a vector through the last thing. I don't know if this would help with that, um, but that kind of thing I can imagine helping. Um, so that's the uh, basic idea there. Um, and then rep along is you can take the thing that you're going along and then some vector and repeat it. Um, so if you want to make an empty vector of NAs of a certain type, you can say, here's, you know, it's the same length as this other thing. Um, and then rep named is you just give a name vector and then what you want to repeat and it makes a named vector with those names and this value at each position. So looking at the examples is probably helpful. Um, you know, you can say repeat uh, X is zero to five. I don't know why you did zero to five and we're in base or we're in R. So one to five would probably be less confusing to people, but whatever. Um, and that's saying, okay, it's, uh, I guess he didn't want to start at one because it makes it look like you're just saying repeat five times. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, something that has length six and it's one, two. So it goes one, two, one, two, one, two, or if it's just one, it'll do one, 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 one. Um, you can create these fresh vectors by uh, repeating NAs or you can take um, some names and then like the values that each of those names is going to have. And it can be a list they're showing as an example. So, um, and then, you know, each of those things has the same set of values. This is, I can imagine cases where I'm like setting up either dummy data or just like the the basic shape of something for some other purpose. Um, these, both these and uh, and these, I can imagine being helpful. All right, any thoughts on that family before I do a quick, quick, quick intro to vectors? All right, so vectors is, um, one of the spin-offs from Arlang. So we've talked about how Arlang is is too big. It has all this functionality in it. CLI is kind of a spin-off from Arlang that it took over some of the um, error mess. Well, like the error messaging stuff is still in Arlang, but then CLI expands on it, makes it better. Um, and then actually goes calls back to Arlang for the, the basics for the actual um, abort and whatnot. Um, so vectors is like all this, um, all these things that we've been talking about, the, the function arguments and the pre um, predicates that we're going to talk about is a little bit in, in vectors. So the general idea is there are these three things. There's um, ways to uh, like, they have vec size instead of length, which is like a more consistent definition because sometimes you'll do length of something. And it's like, oh yeah, the length is one because it's a list that has one element in it, but it's really a it size ten because of the you know what you're expecting. So it, it, they have a whole vignette about that, and then um, there's p type vec p type where you are defining like what you are expecting something to be. So um, Here's the vector. Um, the dots don't do anything in the vec p type, and then um, some some things that you're expecting or, or that you're um, sorry, vec p type doesn't do this, but the uh, vec p type common uh, is gonna like find what do these things have in common? What's the one that they can all coerce to? Um, and that's what the second one is about: this size and type stability. Um, that they want to be able to uh, better predict the output of a function that it will have an out or a size that you expect and a type that you expect. So that vignette is useful to look at so that um, looking at the arguments, it doesn't matter the order that they come in. Uh, if you have two things that are combining together, they're going to combine the same way. Um, and then this last thing is uh, this um, base class for creating S3 vectors, that it um, makes sure that you're doing things cleanly. And it has little bits um, in the vignette to make sure that when you have a tibble, you know, it puts like a abbreviation of the class of every column at the top. 
And so it tells you how to define that. So it'll come out nice, um, how to make printing nice and how to make coercion rules that um, work really well. And that will uh, make sense. And so that's the th three things in vectors. Um, so it, it does overlap with this. It's mostly around um, like when you combine things, making sure they're going to combine the same way and making sure things move. Uh, um, it's It mostly comes down to that whole when things combine, um, the order that they're combined in doesn't change things. So they have uh, an example in here. Uh, yeah, so... Um, so yeah, that the when you combine using vectors two things, it doesn't matter what order they go in; they're always the same. With C, it matters what order they come in. Like the second thing is cast to be the same as the first thing, um, if possible, or like when there's a tie. <laughs> basically, um, in this case, it's like it's finding the combination. Um, and anyway, it has just, it has different rules. Now, some of the things in vectors, which um, we're going to talk about in a minute, I think it's the rules are a little like too strict that um, things that you're used to in R won't uh, just automatically cast with vectors. And so it'll give you an error when you expect it to work. Um, and the the reason that I specifically cared about it is I have cases where it is going to be very likely that sometimes numbers will be coming in as strings. And yes, I could make the users convert it or I could do like a manual conversion beforehand, but I want to just say, hey, I'm okay with that. It's if they turn, if you can turn the string into an integer without losing information, then that's the same thing. I don't care. Um, and so we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's done there and um yeah okay so yeah that was that's the whole thing that they have these prototypes that they're using um instead of class and length they have p type and size or p type show uh that is going to be just more stable that's the whole the whole thing that's going on here i know that was kind of whirlwind and i didn't really go into it because i don't you know like there are many it's a whole book club in itself, possibly. Um, but that's the basic idea of vectors. Um, I will say um, the, where are we? Um, the whole S3 vectors article, if you are creating a like data type for something, um, this vignette is really great. Like if you have a certain type of number that you're going to be working with a lot, you know, let's say it's like, um, you know, something that I've had experience with, which was uh, like question IDs. Um, and they had properties that weren't quite the same as integers and they probably could have used UUIDs, but we didn't, but uh, we had some properties that we cared about. Um, and so it would have been nice if I had known about vector or if vectors had existed back when I was working with those to like create, it, they have, um, they walk you through kind of the things to worry about. And so, you know, they have these record style objects that are certain special things. Um, a bunch of, it's a list of a bunch of things that are parallel, um, a data frame, or uh, I guess as um, a POSIX LT is a good example of that, where it's really a list, but it comes out into like a single object at each row of that list. Um, and so it's a, uh, uh, that's a useful, concept to know about uh anyway so this vector or this uh vignette exists if you're ever working with a certain type of data come look at this thing because it helps walk you through kind of the um how to make your data type work cleanly uh in everything you're working with all right and i know like i said i know that was whirlwind you have any thoughts questions um anything all right, I will continue the whirlwind tour. Good, we're, I think we're gonna actually make it through this time. All right, uh, so the, the next piece is these type predicates. Um, a, a predicate function is just like a, a function that will return uh, true or false um, about a thing. So, you know, like, uh, is this a list? Is this atomic? 
Um, so I'll go look at the specifics that we have. All these is ones, um, they are uh, like type of, and then you know checks that it is the thing that you're asking about, um, or like is dot uh, you know is dot character, etc. But it has some special rules in it, and in all of them you can check the size while you're at it, um, the the length of the vector. And then you can check whether it's finite. Um, that just if you do that, if it's you know if it's checking are there NAs in this vector, it has to look at every value. So that is much slower than just checking is this a you know an integer and does it have the certain length. So that's a thing to know about. Um, so they have, you know, they tell you the difference between what they do and what the base types do. And it is interesting, some of these, um, like I think is null, um, literally just calls is dot null. Some of these do that, but they implemented all of them. Uh, so they have a consistent, you know, you can always use the underscore and it's going to give you, uh, if you're using our line, it'll give you the, the same idea of a function for any type of thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I, I feel like this is a, almost snarky. Unlike is vector, is underscore vector, test them if an object is a vector. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's uh, that's those. Those are, the, you know, it's nice to have a consistent interface. Um, I don't know if I have really used these much of anywhere. If you are testing length, um, this is nice because under the hood, this is calling uh, C, I think, and it's it quickly checks that a thing has a length. It's going to be faster than checking, you know, is dot integer and length uh, equals n. So uh, that's nice. All right. Um, and then related to that, they have these scalar type predicates where scalar just means they are um, length one. Um, there are a lot of cases where you want to know this about an argument, um, or it's good to confirm this about an argument. If someone, you know, if you have a flag that is true or false and someone sends you a vector of true or false, that is uh, likely an error you know, it's not lining up right. And so it's good to be able to check that really quickly. And all of these are really fast. Um, one thing that uh, is, I don't know, almost annoying about these, or I've had to deal with this, of um, they check for exactly scalar. So if it's uh, null or uh, length zero, um, that that would fail this test. And so you would have to like specifically check those things separately. And so I've had cases where I'm like, I either want this to be, you know, I want this to be true or false or just nothing. I don't care what it is. Um, or actually it's character is the specific example where either I need you to give me the person's name or just um, tell me that you don't know their name and you want to leave a blank slot for that person. But I need zero or one uh, strings. Um, and then they also have this is string where you can say it has to equal uh, um, string in their context means like a length one character. Um, and then it has to be exactly this string. So a scalar character that has this certain value and um, is bool uh, is false if it's missing. So it won't like error. Oh, hey, Tan's here. Um, yeah, that's the basics on those. And then they have these uh, bare type functions, the, the bare predicates that um, the difference here is like is list will return true for a data frame, is bare list will return false for a data frame. Um, and so it's saying it has to be exactly that thing, not that thing plus a class. Um, and again, there are cases I can imagine where that would matter. Um, and so that's what this is checking. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything. Um, yeah. 
Oh, so yeah, isn't is numeric also returns true for like integers and I think maybe factors. And so this is saying no no no, it's gotta be an actual floating point number. Um right. that. And then they have is empty, that is just um it's literally just saying is the length zero. Uh because the length is zero for null or for a length zero vector. And in a lot of cases, um, you want both of these things to count as uh, the same thing in um, some if statements. I've definitely had that situation. And so you don't, I don't know, it's a quick way to deal with it. It's again, though, it's just, it's not vex size. It's really, it's literally just length. Uh, length x equals or you know double equals zero um so sorry that was a reply to a comment in the chat but um but so it's like it you know oh yeah actually and i have that one up here that uh um is empty is function x length x equal equals zero so um really straightforward but it's like i said they have all these things that they include them even though it doesn't really do much of anything um, so that you can use that same format in all your code. So you don't have to switch between R lang and um, base R. I still have cases like some of the R lang functions will like even this probably adds a tiny bit of overhead because calling the function takes a little bit of time. And depending what you're doing, that little bit of time can matter. Um, or can at least feel like it matters. <laughs> I don't know how often it actually matters, but anyway, so um, yeah, that's that. Um, and then they have uh, integer-ish. So um, it does, uh, a, it's a little bit like fuzzier than is integer. Um, can't remember what I don't. Like, I think this um, still, it won't work for um, characters that uh, look like an integer. So um, I think that was what I still didn't quite like about this. And then is bare integer-ish um, means like it has to uh, not have a class, but be basically an integer. So it's basically allowing for um, actually, oh, oh, it's it's allowing for a double, but not for uh, like a factor or other things that are integer like, but not uh, not base. Um, and then is scalar integer ish is just base. It, I, actually, I think it's literally just n. You know, it's this with n is one. Um, I can't remember. It, it might be literally that, or it might have its own C call that it does. So um, these are all fairly fast. Uh, I did some testing on some of them because uh, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to add a whole lot of overhead in my testing. You know, if you're testing the arguments to a function, you don't want it to take significant time because who knows how many times that function might be called. Like if you're trying to write something that generic, you know, who knows what functions will be using it. Um, and so, you know, that's where I try to keep it all my time really low on these checks. Um, and then they have is true and is false. This is base has is all caps true and is all caps false um, that do basically the same thing. Um, except, oh, right. These ones uh, don't do any coercion. So it doesn't say is zero like if you pass in zero that's not false that's zero um they make you do a uh, as integer in between or i mean sorry as as logical in between if you want that to count as false um so uh again like there are cases where this matters um and it's it's to make r more like uh some other languages that are stricter about types also, a lot of times users don't expect you to be strict about types, and so it can be confusing. I had one actually where I was trying to filter by 
lengths of a column. So filter lengths X, you know, and you have to say lengths X greater than zero because it doesn't count the zero lengths as false and the lengths that are higher than zero as true. It, it needs you to do that conversion. Um, whereas if you're doing a base R version of that, it will count any length that is higher than zero as one. Or I mean, that's true. Um, all right. So yeah, that's that's all of that. Uh, so that leaves us 25 minutes for my obsessive stable package. Um, so like I said, I have a whole bunch of stuff I'm working on where I need to quickly check that the input is um, what I think it is or close enough to what I think it is. So um, okay, yeah, so you know the the example that I have and I really need to update these is you know you have some function that is taking the argument and adding one and if you pass in character one it says, oh nope, you've tried to pass a non-numeric argument to a binary operator that doesn't work. And, but you could say, uh, okay, convert this into an integer, uh, whatever my arg is, and it'll convert that to one, you know, takes that character one, makes it one, and then you can use it. Um, you can do that with as integer, but this has prettier error messages. So, uh, and also it doesn't like just silently let you do things. Um, so if you do 1.1, it says, oh, that's not uh, coercible to integer um, because we lose pre precision at the first location. Um, or if you have a whole bunch of them, it'll tell you which ones. Um, and if you, you know, if you're looking closely, you might recognize this is stuff that I learned how to do within the last month or so of this uh, club. And so, um, yeah, that's the general idea. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of uh, stuff using this. Um, like I said, I had to deal with, or I wanted to deal with um, speed. So uh, I have, um, so um, yeah, so there's a, um, there are some arguments to, to int. So uh, it has coerce character and coerce factor arguments so far, which are true by default. So you can tell it to not do that. Um, I don't have it yet. Um, I've thought about, and maybe I will add in there that you can override the error to make it a warning um, or things like that. Uh, but right now, um, it just either does it or doesn't. And you know, like I said, I wanted to make sure it was fast enough. Um, and so I have these functions where one, I just call it once and then return true. I didn't want to return whatever I'm passing in because I want to be able to do something gigantic for X and then just throw it away basically. Um, and then, or if I, for some reason, am calling it over and over and over, I want to make sure it doesn't add a whole lot of overhead each time. We'll see about that. Um, or compare it to the base as integer, which is uh, crazy fast, but doesn't, um, follow as many rules and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, you know, a benchmark of I'm doing a hundred thousand. It is technically like 10 times as long uh, than the, the base version, but that 10 times is in microseconds. And so I think I'm happy still um, for null. It's, uh, you know, like same kind of order um, it does, so it does like add overhead to do it repeatedly. I don't love that about it. I might, I need to look into whether memo, memoizing makes sense for this. Um, although again, it's microseconds, so memoize would probably be slower. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, again, with characters, it's, um, it's slower because it is doing conversion, but so is uh, base. And so, um, so it has to do like a check can this be converted, which means it has to look at every value. Um, and actually, I think double is the one that I haven't gone back to look of. For some reason, I'm faster at uh, 
S double and I'm doing, and actually that's one where I kind of cheat because I'm just using vectors for that part. I like how they do coercion of double to integer. And so it just uh, passes through. I don't know why uh, as integer for a double, as an integer is a uh, plus three or better, right? Yeah, it's a primitive. So I don't know why it's slower for doubles. Um, good job vectors, I guess. So, uh, cause vectors is what I'm using there. Um, but yeah, the idea is that, you know, you can just call these and it'll, it'll do that uh, coercion or, oops, if we go back, um, oh, not there. If I do stable, um, I also have all these stabilize versions of it and I have like scalar versions. So stabilize has more arguments. So if I'm stabilizing an integer, not only can I say that I want to allow null, but I can say, you know, is our NAs okay? If you, if not, then I have to actually look at every value. So that does slow things down. Forcing, is that okay? Um, is a, you know, do you have a certain size of the vector that you want, uh, certain values that you want to allow? And then always I do these pass through XR call and X class um, that by default, I'm just using what you pass in, but um, if you want to, you can override these to do fancy things. Um, they exist partly because I did want to override them to do fancy things in um, functions that call one another inside of this package. So I learned, for example, um, when I'm doing the factor coercion, uh, that's something that I have explained somewhere, but I coerce factors as if they're characters, not by their index. Uh, because that's more often what you think is going to happen with a factor, but in base R, it'll just coerce it to an int integer, which is the like position within the labels. Um, and it's rarely what you actually want, especially if stuff's coming in through from a spreadsheet or whatever. Um, and so I, I do that. And in order to do that, uh, if we go to um, definition, you know, this is all S3. Um, and to int dot factor is, uh, it like, uh, tries to, it coerces it, uh, or it checks it. Sorry. That's just, it's using my package to check my package that it checks the argument that whether you want to coerce it, if you want to coerce it, it turns it into a character and then does to int on it. So it's to int character. I actually should just directly call to int dot character there. I'll have to fix that. Um, otherwise I'm throwing errors and you know this is where I'm passing all these calls around so that when you get an error, um, it's going to be a nice fancy CLI error um, that is using the name of the argument from your uh, from your function. So if we go back to well I guess the I had it in the in here that um, my fun has a function named my arg name. And even though you're cast passing that through to other functions, my arg name is what comes through in the error message. Um, and the uh, this uh, class piece, the X class, um, I do that because at this point it's a character and the argument or the error that came back would be saying, hey, I can't coerce a character to integer and it could be confusing because your input wasn't a character, it was a factor. So that's where this gets passed along. Um, so yeah, this this package, um, it's like everything that we've been learning for the last few weeks in this club is what's in this package right now. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all my stuff. Uh, I think that was all I had. Yeah, that's all the stuff I have. So I blew through and made it. Uh, we've been running over. So I was a little nervous and trying to, to push ahead this week and we didn't run over. So does anyone have any questions? Want to see anything more? Um, have, you know, feel free to uh, give me issues or comments in the package. I am working on getting it to a version one, but I uh, forced myself to stop and use it. So I'm working on a different package that's going to use it. It, it. There are missing pieces for sure, but I don't need those pieces for the package I'm working on. So I haven't implemented them yet. Um, 
but I want to try it out and make sure it actually does what I, or it works how I think it will. Um, someone's unmuted. Tan, what do you have to say, Tan? Usually a lot. Um, <laughs> do you find that like it's better? Like I'm, I'm wondering about this package in like a design principles perspective. Like, is it better to be like silently converting, or is it better to throw? like assertion warnings if that makes sense like i feel I, like as a design like a function developer i want to put this on the user rather than automatically converting so the reason i want it to i mean um that is up to you as the function writer for sure mm -hmm. but um a lot of base r but not all of base r does automatic conversion converting and so I don't want to pretend that we're working in a language that doesn't do that. Like, I think that's what Vectors is doing is like, okay, we're going to take some of the discipline from other programming languages and apply it to R. It's like, but that's not how R works. You know, the key example being you've got data that you read, read in from a spreadsheet or from a, you know, a CSV and, oh, crap. Um, like either, uh, you know, reader screwed it up, basically. They they did the automatic conversion and they're like, oh, no, this, uh, I don't know what this is. Or a lot of times I'll end up telling reader to just, just keep them as character because you're screwing up some values. And then I'll go through and manually do something like this. Um, and so I want, if the value is an integer, even though it read in as a character, I want it to be treated as an integer. Um, yes, totally you shouldn't automatically use this. I, I don't know that I'll use it in every single function I ever write. Um, but I have a lot of cases where I do want to, I want that flex or I want to uh, not make the user worry about it because it does check like it's, Hey, you gave me a thousand values and all of them convert to integers without losing anything. Therefore, uh, why not <laughs> is the idea so the original name and maybe i maybe i should have kept with it or stuck with it was um was it uh and this is why i didn't stick with it y k w i m or you know what i mean because that's how r works a lot of the time I, you know that i meant an insure yeah i gave you a vector of numbers but the numbers were integers uh, so um anyway yeah so that's my thoughts on it i know you know it's not, it, it, there's controversy there, thus why it's different uh, than what Vectors does. Um, it was funny because when I, when I first started it, I actually had this idea. Vectors does a lot of things that I really like. Um, you, know, you can see uh, this is actually Vectors. Uh, anything that where you see vector Vectcast, I'm saying, okay, what they do is fine. And so I just uh, cast it using Vectors. And I had done it where I did this interim where I converted it to a like dummy class that had its own conversion rules to the, the so all of these were just like converting from my dummy class to um, or from logical to my dummy class or from my dummy class to, I don't remember how I did it, but it ended up, um, it was kind of overcomplicated and a little slower than just doing it the way I do it here. So ended up not using vectors, but um, anyway, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's my crazy package. I'm using it because I want to uh, work with APIs and it is expensive to send the wrong data to an API. Uh, and a lot of times you'll be doing it with an automated process that sometimes your spreadsheet reads in and gives you a one when you wanted a one. Um, and so I wanna just force that to happen. Um, and that's like, I wrote almost the same package at my old job. Um, the actual implementation is completely different, but the idea was there and it was the same thing that, um, <laughs> in that case we were working with, uh, software teams that didn't always, uh, communicate with one another. And so the same field would be a character in one table and an integer in another table and a double in another table and we were like, and eh, no, it's the same thing, stop it. So um, yeah, so that was just like dealing with other people being annoying. 
Cool. Yep. Uh, cool. And yeah, I've got uh, integer, logical, and character. I don't have double yet, which is the other piece that is necessary for a version one of this, I think. Um, but I don't have any cases of that yet, so I didn't do it. I think it's going to be easy because, um, like, I don't know that I have to write anything. I think the, uh, the R version of as double might be fine, except for allowing you to uh, say whether you want to deal with characters and maybe factors. Um, so, yes. And I guess not just maybe factors, definitely factors. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like this kind of thing is uh, why strings as factors is hated. <laughs> people don't, uh, you know, you don't then deal with it properly. Um, and it was funny because I was like, I feel like this is kind of, this obviously should exist. Why has Arla not done it? And the main reason, like, I got a reply from uh, Headley that they're trying to figure out how to, you know, how to implement it in the package that implements it and then not break things. And plus they have different rules for the way they want to do it. Um, but it is something that they want to do. I'm sure that my version of it is going to be completely different. Number one, at some point, this is the package where I'm going to have to learn to write C because all of this should be go going to C as quickly as it can because uh, you want this to be super fast. Again, it doesn't, it's not obvious, but uh, if you are working with um, like large amounts of data, this check can get really slow. And so you don't want this check to be the thing that is bogging things down. Um, I learned a lot about how to make things faster because we had one in my old version of this, or old um, repper package that was similar to this, that um, it, it was being called in a loop and mine was adding, I don't know, uh, I think it was milliseconds at that time, which wasn't, you know, it was no good. And it was adding milliseconds to a process that was being called a hundred thousand times or something. It's like, nope, can't do that. So uh, got it down to where it was like this, where it, it didn't have a noticeable impact. Um, although it, I don't know, there were things that were much dirtier in that version. I think this one's better. <laughs> um, all right. So we made a side, John, uh, and we can do this in Slack instead if you want, but I noticed that on your repo that you're using uh, um, remotes to install. Have, have, mm -hmm. I've seen some people moving moving to the pack. Uh, any yeah. Thoughts on that? Uh, it pack is better. Everyone should move to pack. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay. So I um, yeah, it's just that I just haven't gotten in the habit of it, and I have templates that I use that uh, just put that in. Oops, that's not my. <laughs> that's a seven. Um, that just put that that piece in automatically and I need to update my template. So that's all that is. Um, I haven't personally gotten in the habit of using pack, uh, but I haven't found a reason not to. Um, it seems to handle thing, just handle everything better. Uh, any weird corner cases aren't corner cases to pack and they still are for remotes um, to the point that um, I know that they are recommending it in use this, and I assume we'll be like uh, merging it into all the places. Like, I'm not sure that you'll really have a choice under the hood before long. I, I think it seems likely that remotes will be using pack. Um, or I don't know the direction on that, whatever, that uh, I think it's going to become invisible. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's shorter to type. So that's better. <laughs> Um, cool. All right. So next week, uh, Arthur is going to be covering hopefully all of this environments, the stack and environment bindings. Um, and then, uh, these, like I said, these last couple, they're just kind of packed with other stuff, but we just have this last little bit to get through and things like, you know, weak references, it's a, I guess you could go down a rabbit hole of what the heck are weak references and why do I care? Um, but for the most part, it's going to be, Hey, this thing exists. If you want to read about it, um, 
debugging actually could be a very long session but um anyway i so i'm going to be uh in chicago actually the eighth i'm not going to be in chicago maybe i should just switch that out um i should do that one uh that uh I'm going to be in Chicago this week before leading up to uh, Puzzle Conf, and it's my like my personal work retreat that I'm doing just for myself to uh, work on some side projects that need some attention. Um, and so that means I'm like I was going to I was like oh we can't do it that week I'm wait I'm not doing anything I'm doing open source work this would be a great week for me to do a presentation about uh, our line so I can take that one but the week after next uh, we will need someone to fill in. Um, and it's good because I suck at using the debugging in R. I am, I, I do way too much manual debugging. I'm getting better at it, but I, it will be good for me to dive in and do it right. All right. Uh, stop sharing and no one has anything else. Oops. Uh, I will go ahead and say stop. All right. Thanks for the world. It's it it quite the ride. <laughs> All right. Sorry for, sorry for barging in like that. Zoom was oh. on my phone. It said I hit join audio, proceeded to oh. blast everything over my speaker, even though I have headphones in, and then <laughs> said I was muted, and it, from the looks on your faces, I was not. So. Uh, 